How's it going guys? So we are here at Dallas Regionals. We have with us Nico Gist. Awesome. And what were you playing this weekend? Uh, I was playing Zora Garbador. Cool. And how did you feel going into this tournament with Zora Garbador? Uh, I feel pretty comfortable with the deck. Uh, I got day two at Anaheim and Portland with it. Nice. Uh, and then I day two uh, Anaheim the previous year with uh, Zora Fix Maniac. So I know the deck, but uh, I didn't have any practice coming into this tournament, so I just had to pick up what I needed. But you still made day two, so that's really good. Yeah, yeah, it felt good. Uh, 7 1 1 day one, and uh, uh, not quite as good day two, but uh, we're. So we're holding out for the finish. Cool, perfect. All right, so let's get into the deck and see the 60 that you were playing this weekend. Yeah. Close the corner. All right, so uh, started with uh, four Zerua. Uh, the Paralyzing Gay Zerua is way better, but I don't own those and I did not want to pay for them. So I uh, went with Ram. Uh, there was only one situation throughout the entire tournament where Paralyzing Gaze would have been helpful, but I still won, so. Nice. Uh, then we play four Zoric GX. Uh, the main attacker, trade ability. Super uh, broken in this format. Best card in Expanded, without a doubt. Um, and one Mind Jack, Stand In Zora. Oh, the flare. Um, yeah, so this is really good in the mirror match. Uh, if they fill up their bench, kill your Zora GX, you can respond with a Mind Jack. Uh, it definitely won me all of the Zora matches I played. Um, yeah, without it, it's uh, it's a rough time. Trevenant also is a lot better when you have that. Nice. I um, see that you're not running foul play. Do you do you yeah. not do you not like foul play, or did you feel that you didn't need it for this tournament? Uh, I don't. Well, both. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, it's pretty much only better than Mind Jack against Buzzwell, and I figured I'm probably just gonna lose to Buzzwell anyway. But. Uh, I, Against Buzzwell, I, I just want to be using my GXs and uh, trying to like red card Garbatox in them, uh, get them to a low hand and take knockouts that way, so. All right, cool, nice. Yep, so uh, that's the Zoric line. Then we played uh, two Execute for the Propagation ability. Uh, lets you trade for free, lets you Ultra Ball for free. Um, the deck would not be nearly as smooth without it. Uh, one Trubbish. And uh, I never needed two because uh, I also had one Ditto. Nice. Uh, Ditto Prism Star uh, could evolve into Zorak GX, into Mind Jack, into uh, Garbodor. So we also played uh, two Garbodor. Uh, the Garbotoxin ability uh, lets you uh, block Sudowoodo uh, so that you can fill up your bench. Uh, if you like end them to two or red card them and Garbotoxin. Uh, then sometimes that's just the game. Right. Um, and then because you are running the Garb line, um, you're not running uh, Trash Lanch. Right, yeah. Uh, so I was going back and forth on whether to run Trash Lanch, and I decided that uh, if you ran Trash Lanch, you know, you have to fit in uh, extra energy. Yeah, extra energy, like Super Rod, stuff like that. And I felt like it lowered the consistency of the deck. Like I wasn't able to play some of the extra text that I felt like were really necessary. Uh, so I think the Trash Lanch may have been like better suited for the meta, but I think it's also just a worse version of the deck. So I just went with tried and true, super consistent. Uh, right, right. Uh, so the rest of the Pokemon, we are playing uh, one Sudowoodo for the roadblock ability. Uh, Really helpful against opposing Zoric decks, helpful against Waylord, uh, Archie's Waylord, because... Um, Once you limit their bench, they can overextend and get other stuff out. Exactly, exactly. Uh, also super helpful against Waylord, uh, the Mr. Mime. So I put it in the night before just for Waylord, didn't test a single game against it, but um, it came in clutch. I played uh, three whales, um, beat two and tied one. Uh, and the mime helped in all of them because uh, it forces them to get the silent lab if they want to use their GX attack. Nice. Uh, so, a couple more Pokemon. Klefki to uh, Wonderlock, attach to Garbodor so you can Garbotoxin uh, just for one turn because it discards at the end of the turn. Uh, it also blocks Primal Groudon. I played a Primal Groudon, I completely forgot that Klefki did that, but it didn't matter because uh, I 2 would him anyway. <laughs> that was a wild match, but uh, Klefki is re really, really good. It's usually the main target of Rescue Stretcher, so... Nice. Uh, 
two, two is really good as well for the mirror, but uh, I'd rather play one and two rescue stretcher, so that's what I decided to do. Cool. Uh, and then we played two Tapu Lele, uh, help you get Bridget's, help you get uh, Chorus, Delinquent, Guzma, uh, and two Shamans. Uh, when you need to draw more cards on your turn, Shaman's the way to go. I like the 2-2 split. I think that's probably best for the deck. I think that's the best way of going about it too. That was yeah. a good deck choice. So, uh, that is all the, the Pokemon. Nice. And let's move to the uh, supporters and stadiums. Uh, so we're playing three Skyfield. Um, I really like playing four Skyfields in this deck, but um, I to figured, make room. yeah, I, I needed to make room, and I figured I'd be playing against a lot of mirror matches. Uh, and in that case, Skyfield is just discard fodder. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to keep one in your deck at all times, just in case they delinquent or field blower it. But yeah, three worked out for the day. I, there weren't too many times where like I really needed a fourth and I whipped it. So nice uh, for supporters, chorus. Uh, best draw supporter in the deck, best draw supporter in Expanded. Yeah, uh, usually, super broken. Yeah, you're usually chorusing for like 8 at a minimum. Uh, the biggest chorus I had was uh, 14. Wow. Um, and then trade, 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 and then, yeah. yeah, you have everything you need. Red card. <laughs> um, so chorus, super good. I wouldn't play less than 3 because uh, you really need that against anything that's item locking you. You need the extra physical copies instead of VS Seeker. Uh, and if you discard some early, you can still lay late for it. So three is great. Awesome. Uh, this was a new addition to the deck. Is two Guzma instead of one, uh, and two was really helpful throughout the day. Uh, it let me manage my resources a bit better, so I could like discard one with a compressor or with Ultra Ball or something, and then still have one in my deck if I needed to use it. Um, I didn't actually play against any Zora control, uh, which was the main reason I did that, because if they giraffe your one Guzma, then you basically lose. You lose, yeah. Uh, so I put in two Guzma because I figured that would help there. I knew it would help in the mirror because, uh, you know, you often just need to like hit something, take a KO. Right. Uh, so having two is really helpful. Uh, we're playing one Bridget. Ooh, risk taker. Uh, no, you... Having two Bridget, it's just uh, a clunky card past turn one. Uh, it's a dead card past turn one. You never want to use it past turn one. Right. Because uh, any time that you would Bridget later in the game, you could just chorus and get all the same Pokemon. So uh, there were a couple times where I needed it and it was prized. But overall, I think the utility of having extra cards in place of the second Bridget was worth it. I wouldn't change that count. Uh, then we played uh, one Delinquent. Delinquent helped, uh, just a, another disruption card, you can red card delinquent them uh, down so to... either one or zero. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it didn't actually have too much use throughout the day, but I think the threat of it actually does make a big difference, because people know you're playing delinquent, so They'll they have keep... to like hold, hold their resources, hold extra cards in their hand that they want to play, so that they don't get uh, delinquent to zero. Right. Uh, so it was good. I wouldn't take it out. Uh, I think it's too versatile, um, but it didn't have much use today, admittedly. Um, and then last supporter, we have one N. Uh, N is just super good. It's another draw supporter that's better on the first turn than Chorus if you need a draw supporter. Uh, it is... It's super broken late game too when you have yeah. Garb out and you're playing against Zoro matchups. You can end them to like one or two and then they can't trade because you have Garb up so you pretty much lock them out of the game. Exactly, yeah. yeah. If you can take a knockout and end and Garbatoxin, that can be like game ending. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then last is three BS Seeker. So I didn't want to play four because uh, I've never needed four with the deck. Like, you are trying to win as quick as possible. Like, even though your games go a long time, there aren't actually that many turns that you take. So, uh, like, I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight supporters that I'm playing. Like, I'm not ever going to need to play, like, 12 supporters in a game, in a right. sense. Uh, so I never need that fourth BS Seeker. And if I were to add it, I would rather just play, like, a Juniper or something. Cool. So, uh, that's the supporters, that's the stadiums. Um, Let's move on to the items. Yeah. 
So like almost every expanded deck, we start with four Ultra Ball. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to get your Pokemon. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah. Consistency too. It helps out a lot. Yeah. Uh, three Choice Band. Uh, you absolutely need three Choice Band in the mirror. Two doesn't cut it. Uh, because if you have to discard one early, if you uh, take a knockout with one and then they knock you out in return, uh, you essentially need this to take, like each choice band is two prizes. Right. You knock out three Zoras, um, or whatever it is. You don't want to have to rely on like Guzma, a Lele, or a Shaman or something. So three choice bands, super necessary. Uh, two Floatstone is also really, really good. Uh, uh, it helps if you have something bad active, it helps with Garbatoxin. I wouldn't drop to one. I, I played one back in Anaheim and uh, this was definitely a good cut. A better choice. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, and then two field blower. So you need two uh, for the mirror uh, because otherwise you have like no real way to come back late game. If they Garbatox in you and Ann or red card, you basically just lose. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need the two blower in order to get rid of their Garbatoxin. Uh, it's really helpful against uh, just random things as well. Two blower is always good. And worst case, you just discard it. So it also helps you because you can like field blower your own Garbotoxin. Yeah. If you trade, get the cards that you want in your hand, and then you activate Garbotoxin again, and then you pass or exactly, you tag. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is uh, busted. I I field blowered my own tool off of Garbodor many many times today. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Two red card. Uh, shuffle, your opponent shuffles, draws four. Um, anytime they have a big hand, you can just red card them, bring them back down, Garbatoxin. Uh, but in the mirror as well, if you're worried like that they like have everything they need to, to take a key knockout, you can just red card them down and force them to like trade into it again. Right. Um, two compressor. Uh, two was a good number because you really want to hit that early game to get eggs in the discard, to get uh, supporters you can be a seeker for. Uh, it's a good consistency card, it's great turn one. Uh, and late game, it can also help you thin things you don't want out of your deck. Nice. Uh, then we play two Rescue Stretcher. So I cut the second cleft key for the second Rescue Stretcher and it was a great decision. I uh, never really wanted a second cleft key because whenever I did, I just rescue stretching for it. Right. Um, and it's better in almost every other situation. So, um, great card helps you get back uh, mind jack so that you can mind jack like back to back turns mm -hmm. uh, and also shuffling uh, Pokemon late game. Uh, I got like paralleled to three a couple times. Then you stretch your Pokemon back in. Uh, you can counter it with uh, Sky Field. You know, find the Pokemon, get the eggs out, and then pop you know, off. Pop off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the last couple cards, we have uh, Pokemon Communication. Uh, really good for searching out whatever you want. Uh, since you have eggs and discard, you can almost always use this, um, and it just helps. It's like an Ultra Ball for free, essentially. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, one special charge. You need the special charge uh, in order to beat uh, Trevenant, in order to beat anything that's discarding your energy. Like against whales, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's also just really helpful if like, you take a couple knockouts, you have to retreat with the DCE or something, you just special charge him back and that way you have him for sure. Nice. Uh, there was one game where I prized two DCE and I had to special charge, I took a knockout uh, she knocked me out in return, and I had to special charge the one back. Chorus for like 10 uh, trade trade. I drew that one DCE, so special charge. Um, Busted. Clutch, yeah. And then the ace spec of choice is Dowsing Machine. Uh, it's the best ace spec in Expanded for sure. Yeah. Um, helps you get back any resource that you need. Counts uh, as another Bea Seeker. Yeah, it's a it's a it's an extra copy of every single trainer in your deck. And when it comes to taking key knockouts late game, like that's the card. Yeah. So uh, always play Dowsing Machine, nothing else. <laughs> Alright, and then the energy is pretty simple. I'm not playing Trash Lynch, so it is just four double colorless. Cool, nice and simple. Yeah. Alright. Alright guys, that was the 60 that he played this weekend. Alright guys, so that was the deck that he played this weekend. What was your thoughts going into day two with this deck? Uh I did not feel confident honestly because uh, I did not do well at the previous two day twos and I know like all the top players are like prepped for Zoragar but 
at the same time, like, it's a good deck, uh, it's super consistent, hits really hard, so I knew that, like, I could definitely get some wins, it's just a matter of, like, drawing well. Nice. And then, what was, your one of, what was one of your toughest matches of day one? Uh, toughest matches of day one, uh, I had round three was my toughest match, for sure. Um, so, uh, my first round, I had a did not show, which was a great free win. Yeah. Uh, round two, I lost the mirror. Um, and it's someone who, right now, he's playing for top eight, so good player. Um, and then uh, round three, I was one and one, and she flips over Buzzwool, and I thought my I thought my day was over. Yeah. Um, she like steamrolls me game one. It was not close. Uh, and then game two, she was playing a, a Buzz GX version, not the Baby Buzz. Mm -hmm. uh, she had like one or two Baby Buzz, but um, I was able to take three. KOs on her bus GX, so I like just Steam. barely, just barely got uh, the win game two, and then game three, she opens like Buzzwool, GX, Rock Rough, Rock, Rock Rough, mm -hmm. draws, passes, <gasps> and we have like seven minutes left. I'm like, and you're okay, just like, I can win this, I can win this. You just go ham. Turn two, I hit 190 on her bus GX. Turn three, I hit 190 on her bench bus GX. Turn four, I hit 190 on her bench bus GX. And like time was called right after we were done. Wow. It, <laughs> it felt good. It felt good coming out of that. Yeah, winning against Buzz, running Zoark has to feel extremely great. Yeah. And then round four, played another Buzz Rock. Uh, but that one was a bit easier, so. Nice. Alright, cool. And then uh, I know we have St. Louis coming up. Will you be attending St. Louis? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I haven't decided yet. I'm just gonna try and hit some more cups in uh, LA area and uh, go from there. Yeah. Okay. It is it is standard. Any thoughts? Anything that you have like thinking of? I don't have a single standard deck built. I don't think I've played the format in like three months. Oh wow. Uh, expanded for for life, man. Expanded for life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So with that said, Canada is in March. Will you be showing up to Canada? That sounds fun. I have relatives in Canada. Hey, Canada, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. All right, cool, perfect. So hopefully we see you in Canada and hopefully the meta doesn't shift too much with tag team coming out and you can stick with Zoro Garb for that tournament. We'll see, we'll see. But yeah. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the channel. It was a pleasure to have you. Guys, with that said, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to share the video with anybody that wants to see a good Zoro Garb list that made day two. With that said, guys, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.